Good morning, Geometry. Um, today we're going to look at area and perimeter of polygons. But first, we need to talk about how we name polygons. So polygons are named by the number of their sides. Um, you guys have all heard of a triangle, right? It's got three sides. Five sides are pentagon. We're going to come back to quadrilateral in just a second, okay? Uh, six would be hexagon. Seven would be heptagon. Eight is octagon. Nine is nonagon. 10 is decagon, 12 is dodecagon, and anything over 12, we would just call it by its side. So it could be 15 gone. So I have a little n gone here to kind of show that. Um, I'm going to highlight some of the prefixes here so that you could see that the end part of the word does not change, right? Um, the beginning portion, the prefix, has to do with the number of sides. So tri means three. I told you we'd come back to four. Four is a quadrilateral. All right, four is a quadrilateral. Squares, rectangles, um, parallelograms, those are all kinds of quadrilaterals. All right, if it's a four-sided figure, it's always a quadrilateral, and sometimes we have special cases. So I just want to make sure I highlight that one because it's a big pet peeve of geometry teachers when you call something a parallelogram and you don't know the sides are parallel. It's a quadrilateral until we can prove it's a parallelogram. All right? So the prefixes, that's how we name things. All right? The prefixes determine um, are determined by their number of sides. Now, we have two different kinds of polygons. We have convex polygons, which is something like this. All right, it's a quadrilateral, right? But all sides that contain a side are exterior. They're all exterior. Now you might look at me and go, yeah, that's how they normally are. You're right, normally. But sometimes we have something that's concave. And it might still be a quadrilateral, but it's more like this shaped, kind of like a chevron, right? It still has one, two, three, four sides, um, but we have any line that contains a side crosses the interior, crosses the interior. All right, so um, we do have two different kinds, convex and concave, and we're going to practice naming those in some of our skills practice today. Next thing we need to talk about is finding perimeter and area, because that's what this entire thing is all about, right, is perimeter and area. So um, perimeter, most of you already know, is the sum of all the sides. Now, I have here, in fact, a rectangle. I'm telling you it's a rectangle. We can call it a rectangle. I know that side OM is 7. That means the side LN is also 7. And if side LO is 12, then side NM is also 12. So when I go to find the perimeter of this, all right, we're going to start with our setup, right? Well, our setup is going to be LN plus NM plus M O or O M, it doesn't matter, plus O L. And then I can substitute in my values. So we have 7 plus 12 plus 7 plus 12. Well, that means the perimeter of rectangle L N M O is, oh, I just went blank, 84. No, 40, 40, Whew, 40. That's 19, that's 19, 38. Man, it's early still, guys, for me. Hopefully you're watching this not at, you know, 6 a.m. So the next one we want to talk about is area. Area of a polygon is basically the square footage or the footprint of the figure, all right? So it's how much surface uh, the figure covers. And typically it's in the form area equals base times height. All right, area equals base times height. So for this figure right here, our base is 12, and our height is 7. Got a little cattywampus there. So for this one, when I go to find the area, it would be 12 times 7. So that means its area is 84. All right, um, here are some common area formulas down here. So a rectangle is base times height, 
um, I have length and width on here, but we know that this is the base and this is the height. Uh, parallelogram is also base times height. The base is the um, whatever the bottom is. And then the height is uh, usually this dashed line. All right, it's not this angled one. It's the one that goes straight up and down that has that right angle there. For triangles, um, the area is one half base times height. All right, it's basically half of a, a rectangle or half of a square, depending. Now let's take a look at calculating perimeters and areas in the coordinate plane because um, it's not going to be as pretty as what we were given in our example up here. So if you have horizontal and vertical lengths, then you are able to count the number of squares to determine its length. All right, because you have a nice horizontal line or a nice vertical line, it's easy to count those squares to figure out its length. Our rectangle is a great example of that. But what if you have a diagonal, kind of like in this parallelogram or in this triangle? What do you do then? Good news is we just learned a formula for that. It is the distance formula. All right, we have to use the distance formula. So this is for when we have something that is diagonal. So our distance formula, remember, is square root x two minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So we're going to do an example of that right now. Um, we have triangle SUN, aka sun, with coordinates, s is at negative 6, 3. So I'm going to put some on here for our uh, axis. So negative 6, 3 is where s is. u is at negative 6, negative 2. And then n is at positive 6, negative 2. So I'm going to connect all these with some line segments. This one's the trickiest. If you have a ruler, use it. I do not have a ruler at the moment, so I'm just going to find a nice straight edge. There we go. Nice straight lines are very important in geometry. So we've got our little triangle here. Um, I can easily figure out the distance of SU, right? SU, I can count it. One, two, three, four, five. So SU is five units. UN, I can figure out the length of UN as well. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I know those ones pretty easily, which means I can find the area. Because when we look up here, area is going to be one half base times height. Well, UN here is my base. And SU here is my height. So it's pretty easy to find one half. The base is 12 and the height is 5. 12 times 5 is 60. Half of 60 is 30. I'm still looking for my perimeter, though. I have to add them all together, but I don't even know how long SN is. So to figure out the length of SN, I need to do the square root of, um, and I need to take S and N. So S and N are these guys right here. So we've got x1, x2, y1, and y2. So we have 6 minus negative 6 squared plus negative 2 minus 3 squared. So an sn is equal to the square root. Well, 6 minus negative 6, remember that's really plus. I turn that into a plus now. So that means I have 12 squared. And then negative 2 minus 3, or negative 2 plus negative 3, is negative 5 squared. 
Well, 12 squared I know is 144. 5 squared, negative 5 squared, is 25. So that means the length of Sn is equal to the square root of 169. Some of you might know that that is a perfect square. So Sn is equal to 13. Now I can find my perimeter. So the perimeter is going to be Su plus Un plus Sn. So my perimeter is 5 plus 12 plus 13. 13 and 12 make 25, plus 5 is 30. So this is a rare instance when um, our area and perimeter are exactly the same. So there are more problems in this. I want you to try at least two more. All right, try at least two more um, and email me with questions. Uh, the distance formula obviously is never going away, so we need to get feeling very comfortable with it.